Hey everyone, John Reed here, author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope. This is the first of three videos covering everything there is to know about the Celestron 70EQ telescope. In this video, I'll introduce the concept of the equatorially mounted telescope for visual astronomy. We'll unbox this telescope, assemble it, balance it, and align the finder scope. In video two, I'll show you how to use the telescope, aligning the mount to the celestial pole, providing tips and tricks, and offer solutions to the challenges I faced while testing this telescope. And in video three, we'll push this telescope to the max as we try to replicate the process used to take the pretty picture on the box. Well, I hope you enjoy this three-part series on the Celestron 70 EQ telescope. This is Learn to Stargaze. Now, if I were to ask you to close your eyes and picture a telescope, this telescope is probably the one you're imagining. It's a classic design, one featured in many children's bedrooms in the movies. And in a previous generation, those who used celestial navigation on a ship or an aeroplane, this might have been the perfect telescope. That generation was used to slide rules and sextants. So using a telescope with setting circles to set the right ascension and declination, targeting an index star, and then using celestial coordinates to locate a deep sky object might have come naturally to them. But my generation is a little bit different. Most people these days just want to point the telescope at space and see something cool without thinking too much about it. That's why there are so many apps and books like mine that show exactly how to do that without having to worry too much about celestial mechanics. EQ means equatorially mounted, which means that instead of left and right and up and down, this telescope is designed to move on the declination axis, which means toward or away from the North Star, and on the right ascension axis, which basically means circling around the North Star. Obviously, if you're living south of the equator, instead of the North Star, you're going to use the South Celestial Pole as a reference. So why would a beginner telescope come on an EQ mount? EQ mounts exist so that you can track the Earth's rotation by adjusting only one axis. But I found that for visual observing, tracking Earth's rotation is trivially easy in any telescope. So an EQ mount for simple visual observation is kind of pointless. And what about the optics? Well, this particular scope has an aperture of 70 millimeters. Now, aperture is one of the most important attributes of a telescope's optical design, and wider is better. This determines the resolution of the telescope, in other words, how fine of details you can see on your target objects. It also determines how much light the telescope gathers. Wider diameters collect more light and make dim objects like galaxies appear brighter. Now, I usually recommend that beginners start with at least four inches or about 100 millimeters of aperture at minimum. This is so that you can at least see a few more deep sky objects, like globular clusters, in addition to the moon and planets. Now, I understand that budgets are tight and there's telescope inflation going on right now, but you have to recognize that the aperture is a limiting factor here. Well, enough talk. Let's open the box and put it together. I wonder if I'll need the instructions this time. Cue a time lapse. I was just shook. Did we just have an earthquake? That was wild. Everything okay out there? So this telescope comes with two eyepieces and a barlow. Now before we talk about the eyepieces, we need to talk about maximum useful magnification. Now you can add barlows and high-powered eyepieces to any telescope and zoom way, way in. But there's a limit based on the laws of physics as to how well those objects will appear. Zoom in too much and the object you are looking at will just look terrible. Now the way you calculate this, or at least estimate it, is simple. Take the aperture of the telescope in inches and multiply it by 50. So this telescope has an aperture of 2 and 3 quarters inches. 
So multiplying two and three quarters by 50 is about 140. So the maximum useful magnification of this telescope is 140 times. Now this telescope comes with a 20 millimeter eyepiece providing 30 times magnification. Now this is the eyepiece you're gonna use most of the time without adding the Barlow. Just this in the diagonal right here. Now the other eyepiece is a four millimeter eyepiece. This is very high power, providing 175 times magnification, which is well beyond the telescope's maximum useful magnification. So objects viewed in this eyepiece will not look nearly as good, even though you're zoomed in. Now the telescope also comes with a 3x Barlow, which is optional. And remember, a Barlow goes between the diagonal and the eyepiece. And if you were to add this diagonal, to the four millimeter eyepiece, you'd have a magnification of 405. Good luck with that. That's far too much to be useful and objects will look horrible. Now add the 3X Barlow between the 20 millimeter eyepiece and the diagonal, and that's a reasonable 105 times magnification. Great for observing lunar craters or the rings of Saturn. However, don't start with the Barlow. Find your target first with the 20 millimeter eyepiece, even if it's just the moon, then add the Barlow. Remember, you'll need to refocus the telescope every time you change eyepieces or every time you add or remove the Barlow. So one of the things you need to do with an equatorially mounted telescope is balance it. And so we're gonna start with the RA axis right here. So I'm gonna loosen that axis and let the telescope go to one side. Okay, so you can see here that the counterweight side is heavier than the telescope. And so what we're gonna do is loosen the counterweight and move it up until the telescope is in balance on this axis right there. And it stays where you put it when you let go. Now we're gonna balance the declination axis. So I'm gonna loosen the declination lock here and make sure the telescope stays where I put it. Now this actually looks pretty good, but if this needs to be balanced, what you would do is loosen these two nuts here and then slide the telescope up or down. Now sometimes if you're holding a camera or something heavy on one end, you definitely want to slide the telescope up in this axis here and that will help balance the telescope that way. So by far the most important thing to do when setting up a telescope is to make sure that the finder scope and the telescope are pointed at exactly the same spot. And this is far easier to do during the day than at night. And what I do is use a distant chimney, in this case, this chimney right here. And what you do is you first get the telescope close by getting that chimney in the finder scope. The chimney's probably not gonna be in the telescope itself when you first look. So what you're gonna do is point the telescope at the chimney. It's also a good idea to focus the telescope at the same time during this step. And then what you're gonna do is use these alignment screws here, one, two, and then three underneath, to move the finder scope so that the finder scope is also centered precisely on the top of that chimney. And then you're gonna check it, going back and forth between the finder and the telescope to see that the chimney is positioned precisely in the same spot in both the telescope and the finder. Now here's the chimney through the telescope's eyepiece. And let's just check the finder one more time. And yes, I can confirm that the chimney is centered in the finder scope as well. Now I'm gonna show you one of the best uses of an equatorial telescope for visual astronomy, and that's observing the moon. Now I'm participating in the RISC's Explore the Moon program, and in this program, what I need to do is identify all these craters on the moon through the telescope, sketch them here, and take a log of my progress. And it's really helpful to have a telescope like this because it's going to be pointed at the moon all night, and as the moon drifts, I just turn the right ascension. And this really allows me to just concentrate on the sketching and not think about positioning the telescope. Every minute and a half or so, I just turn the right ascension knob about half a turn, and that keeps the moon in frame for the duration of my sketch.
Well, I hope you enjoyed learning how to set up the Celestron 70 EQ telescope. Stay tuned for part two, where I'll show you how to align this telescope to the night sky and use it to find things in space. Now, if you're having trouble with your new telescope, especially an equatorially mounted one like this, you need to practice on the moon. In fact, you can spend a lifetime observing the moon and see new things every time. That's why I wrote 50 things to see on the moon. This book helps you build that appreciation. And that's why when Celestron Telescope saw this book, they immediately started packaging it with their beginner telescopes for the Apollo 50th celebration. This book has the highest percentage of five-star reviews of any books in this series and helped win the 2020 Simon Newcomb Award for Excellence in Science Communication from the RASC. If you like this YouTube channel, definitely check out this book. Also, please subscribe to this channel, Learn to Stargaze, so you don't miss any future content. And remember, the future is looking up.